Holiday Memories of Grand Rapids, hosted by Teresa Tomey and Patrick Ziegler. Hi, I'm Teresa. And I'm Patrick. And we're your hosts for Holiday Memories of Grand Rapids. A holiday retrospective that celebrates our collective past and gives a nod to our present. I am thrilled. This is the most wonderful time of the year. With the snow and the cold and the parties, the presents, the family. The stress. I mean, seriously, let's be honest. When the first Christmas specials came on air, the pace of our world was much slower. So we thought we'd take a moment and slow things down a bit. And we couldn't think of a better way to celebrate our past than to honor the holidays of days gone by. Imagine, if you will, the holidays approaching. You still need to get something for Aunt Bibi, like perfume. Yeah, perfume. And little Billy? Well, he's gonna want a big wheel, mm -hmm. or depending on the year, a howdy doody doll, or if it was me, I would have wanted a Planet of the Apes action figure. Which you got, I think, <laughs> I and <did>. still have. <laughs> well, for me, it was a Chrissy doll. And for your mother, we'll call her Amelda, I'm guessing she'll want some fabric. So you head downtown. To Steckity's, to Wurzburg's, to Herpelsheimer's you go. You know, I think this is the perfect time to share our first holiday memory for your enjoyment. I'm uh, a daughter of Henry, Hinch Herpelsheimer. My great-great-grandfather came over, of course, from Germany. And my great-great-grandfather, which was William George Herpelsheimer, is the actual uh, relative that built the store. He was in with Voigt Herpelsheimer, and that's uh, a well-known name in Grand Rapids. And they were friends, but decided to uh, start their own business and so grandpa then uh, decided that he wanted to have a store was able to figure out the financing evidently and he built the Herpelsheimer store which is on was on Monroe and um, um, Ottawa in fact it's right where the museum is now I remember my mother and grandmother, especially Grandma Herpelsheimer, taking me to the door and showing me my grandpa's picture, which was on one side, and my great-grandpa's picture, which was on the other side. I knew I respected it, even as a child. Oh, I used to deliver gifts for Herpelsheimers, you know, and uh, that, uh, it was great to see the little kids, you know, they'd come, you know, and they'd see all these presents, you know, and they was all wrapped up, you know, and, uh, but, you know, I, I enjoyed it very much, and it was a great job. My very first memory, actually, is when we moved to Grand Rapids and we moved to the um, South End on Morris and Wealthy. And we used to actually walk, me and my brother used to get all dressed up, get our boots on and our hats and our gloves. And we would walk from our house downtown to go shopping for our parents. And back then we, of course, was Herpelsheimer's was there. And we'd stop into Herpelsheimer's and then we would go to the, I think to what we considered dollar stores. They were Kresge's, I think and Woolworths, both of those, I think. And we would go and find little trinkets that we thought were just so pretty, probably a buck or 50 cents or whatever. And we'd come home and we'd wrap them up. But back then we could just walk all downtown, get a little candy and come back home and wrap our gifts. And Herpel Shimers was dear to our hearts because my mother had worked at the old Herpel Shimers location um, working stock for the fashion shows which Betty Bloomer, later Ford, uh, coordinated. So we have a lot of department store stuff in our memory. I worked there 42 years and I loved every moment of it. 
Coming up, more wonderful holiday memories. But first, a word from our sponsors. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group. Serving the area of Greater Grand Rapids for over 30 years. Oh wait, this isn't everything. Bear back. And we're back with Holiday Memories of Grand Rapids. Right now, let's take a look at more nostalgic recollections from community members. One of the really special memories I have was uh, going downtown to Steckety's because they had a, a secret special corner where kids could go buy presents for their parents and maybe siblings, but for sure parents, and parents weren't allowed to go in there. And it was very nice because it helped you narrow down the selections and the things were very reasonable um, with your allowance or your babysitting money. So it was, it was a really fun opportunity to go shopping. I'm fifth generation um, from when Paul Steckety started the store in 1862. So he was my great, great grandfather. Um, at that time, um, the, the first floor was all accessories and books and candy and the clock that everybody's familiar with, and the men's store, which was a very big department at Christmas time, as you can imagine. And then the second and third floor, women's clothing, um, everything from lingerie to coats and dresses and sportswear. And then the fourth floor was carpet and gift wrap and the credit department and, and kind of home furnishings, basically. And then the fifth floor was china and gifts. And the sixth floor was all housewares. And then the seventh floor was all toys. So I do have very fond memories of always going to the toy department when I was very little. Fabulous department stores of Wurzburgs and Herpelsheimers and Steckities and waiting to go to the uh, toy floors so that we could see all these dolls, thousands and thousands of dolls. I'm sure there weren't that many, but it uh, seemed like it. I couldn't have been happier growing up in Grand Rapids and then Wyoming. And Christmas was always so exciting with all the hustle and bustle of going to one side of the family on Christmas Eve and then the other side of the family on Christmas Day. And then on the 26th, it was all about playing with your toys and going out in the snow. Oh, I love to play outside in the winter. We'd go sledding at Mulek Park Elementary and get walking tacos at the top of the hill. You know, those, those corn chips with meat in them. What? <laughs> oh. Well, okay, they were gross, but fun. Okay, and there was Richmond Park, right? And for me, Pine Ridge Park in Wyoming. Oh, yep, Fuller Hill, Johnson Park, sledding until your toes were frozen, despite being uh, putting bread bags in your boots to line them up and keep your feet dry. Thanks, Mom. I and guess. then we'd go back inside, and I'd sit around and listen to all of my great aunts and uncles mm -hmm. and my grandparents telling Christmas stories. It was one of my favorite things. Oh, stories. I loved listening in on the grown-ups. Now let's listen to some more stories from grown-ups. Uh, Mulek Park had this fabulous sledding hill in the winter that was the hugest thing I can ever even imagine. And it was terrifying and frightening and fun and exhilarating to get on a sled and go down that hill. But it also had a little ice skating rink. And so in the winter they would have hot chocolate and we would go down and ice skate there.
was maybe eight or nine years old, we went to the Schnitzelbank for um, Christmas Eve dinner. And it was one of those years where it hadn't snowed and everybody wanted it to snow. And I can even remember going to bed and praying for it to snow. And that day at Christmas Eve, we had just been seated for dinner, or I was waiting for a seat for dinner, and down came the snow. And it was those big, beautiful flakes. And to me, it was a Christmas Eve sort of miracle. And I remember thinking, I hope I remember this moment the rest of my life. I literally sat in my chair as an eight or nine year old child and said, I really hope I remember this the rest of my life. And I've remembered sitting in this old, this brown chair right by the register at the Schnitzelbank and looking outside and seeing the snow come down. Dad was Grandpa Bob. I think lots of people know Grandpa Bob from uh, Granny's Kitchen and Restaurant uh, on 28th Street. Long gone, but a fixture of Grand Rapids in the uh, 70s and 80s. And among other things, Grandpa Bob was the um, played. Uh, he was a big guy, so he played Santa Claus and did a great job with it. He would sit out front. If people remember the sign, there was the Granny's Kitchen sign where the grannies would hang out on the rocking chair. Well, Dad would go out as Santa Claus and sit on that rocking chair and then compel people to come into Granny's. And, of course, all the kids loved to go in there because he would tell terrible jokes, hand out just the awfulest candy. But he'd sneak off, make kids an ice cream cone, uh, something out of the ice cream fountain, and bring it back to them. And people would drive from all over West Michigan, Muskegon, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, Rockford. They'd come in from Mount Pleasant to see... Grandpa Bob playing Santa Claus. And to many kids, he was Santa Claus, in some ways as much as the Santa Claus that did the downtown parade. The tea room still is well known in all of Michigan because so many people went to eat there. And I remember um, my feelings were excitement, but I was made, I was probably six or eight, I was made to wear a hat. And I was a little of a tomboy and white gloves. And so it was excitement to go there because the smell when the doors open just was magnificent, like cinnamon rolls. Yeah, coming downtown, usually on the public bus, was a way to be with a lot of people that you didn't know who were all basically having a similar experience. And uh, it was very, very special. I used to uh, take a streetcar uh, where we lived out in the East End and uh, downtown to work at QP uh, six days a week, si uh, 60 hours a week, 30, 30 cents an hour. I learned the hamburger business there. And so I had some experience when I went to, into this so I knew what I was doing. The first thing I did when I got in there, I went to a metallurgist. He had three big round frying pans, and I had them build up two and a half inches on the sides so the butter wouldn't boil over. It, didn't, it boiled over anyway somewhat. And uh, we served our hamburgers on white bread only, with uh, mustard, and on only, mustard and onion only. And uh, I could cook six hamburgers at a time, boil them in this deep butter. And uh, I had two spatches, I I'd reach in and pull them out of there. And when you pull them out of there, butter came with it. So it was the, uh, the uh, bread was yellow with butter, and that's what gave it a good flavor. Stay tuned for more memories, photos, and footage never before seen on TV. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group, serving the area of Greater Grand Rapids for over 30 years. Why do you partner with Grand Rapids Community Foundation? Because they make a bigger impact. 
to learn about local giving because of their commitment to our community. Since 1922, the Community Foundation has been a guide for local philanthropy. We partner because of their local expertise. Their trustworthiness. And integrity. Because they advocate for inclusion and equity. I'm Diana Seeger and I invite you to go online and join us today. Grand Rapids Community Foundation, connecting with community. Special thanks to One Trick Pony and The Cottage Bar and Restaurant, a Grand Rapids tradition since 1927. Oh, how I love these Christmas beads. They belong to my grandmother, then my mother, and now me. This is one of the many reasons I love this time of year. So, so few things are kept in our lives for decades and generations, but holiday decorations for homes seem to last forever. I mean, don't you still have that one item that you pull out every year and think, I got to get rid of this, and then you just can't do it. In our family, it's an angel that sits at the top of the tree that is actually my mother's grandmother's. Oh, okay. And then there's the soap on the rope that I made in kindergarten that was so heavy that the joke in the family was that it would hang down and break off the branches <laughs> of the tree. I think we all have those decorations that we made that were adorable for just maybe the first year and then they all end up at the bottom of the Christmas tree. You know, tis the season for a lot of traditions like making ornaments and celebrating the holidays in many different ways. This is the time of year people in our community celebrate Christmas and Kwanzaa and Hanukkah and more. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group. The Newman family, Bill, Steve, and Mary, remember their parents, Bill and Mary Alice, with love at this holiday season. Thank you to Inspire Talent Group, scouting actors, singers, models, and dancers. Find them on Facebook at Inspire Talent Group, LLC. Additional thanks to Christmas Decor and DeVries Landscape Management, Downtown Grand Rapids, Inc., and the Grand Rapids Public Museum. We surely hope you're having as much fun as we are having on this journey into our collective past. I know, you're all sitting there thinking, why haven't they talked about the Herbelsheimer's train yet? Why haven't they talked about Rudolph? Aren't those great memories? Yes. I, I mean, I remember riding that train and thinking you were so high in the air, when actually we were just a bit above all the shoppers' heads down below. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's funny how, how sometimes our memories get jumbled up. I mean, everybody seems to have a slightly different take on Rudolph, for example. I mean, some folks thought that the present he gave you shot out of his side. And some folks thought that, well, they did, that it came out of his bottom, when in reality, it just came from a shoot out of the wall. Well, we're gonna show you something now that might spark some memories for you. This is it, the actual Herpelsheimer's train, and it's been refurbished by Dave Winnick. 
And when he did so, he found uh, old Wurzburg and Herpelsheimer's pins and buttons and candy wrappers left by kids through the years. And now it is in the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Can you believe it? We actually used to ride around in this little thing. Oh my gosh, this brings back such great memories. It sure does. Now let's hear from other people and their memories. <laughs> Every Christmas, my Aunt Midge, who remained single all her life, she would take me and my sister down to Herpelsheimer's. We would go down to the basement, which is where the train was. You know, it would ride around the track and it was such a magical fantasy to ride that train. I think Aunt Midge might have squeezed herself into, into the train as well um, one year. One of my favorite stories about the train was when my parents decided that I needed to uh, chaperone my little brothers and sisters on the train. Um, and at the, at the ripe old age of about eight, I thought I was much, much too old to ride the train, but uh, I did. Took one for the team, was a good sport. Little brothers and sisters had big beaming smiles and a very happy night. I do remember Rudolph, and it was a highlight for me to put the money in and have Rudolph talk to me and bow his head, and then the anticipation of waiting for the present to come down and then seeing what was in it. Well, when we would go downtown during the Christmas time, we always had to go to Herpelsheimer's because not only did they have the train and Santa, they had Rudolph. And Rudolph would talk to you, and his leg would go up and down, and his nose would get bright, and it was just too much fun. So we had to go see Rudolph at Herpelsheimer's. Herpelsheimer's was still there when our first two kids came along. And um, so we took them down there and at Christmas time, and Rudolph was still there. Of course, Santa Claus was still there. And, and I took the kids in one year for uh, their visit to Rudolph, and, and Rudolph said, Hi, Fred, I haven't seen you for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids were just in awe. They thought this was just great. Rudolph knows our dad. And, and so then they talked to Rudolph, and then Rudolph gave them their gifts, as, as Rudolph always did. But, and it wasn't until a little while later, this girl that I went to high school with came out, and she had been Rudolph. So <laughs> it was just great. It, it made me into a, a bigger-than-life uh, father, I guess, for them, because Rudolph remembered me. So our father was George Miller. He had a real estate business in Easttown for many, many years. And when I was growing up, he would take me downtown and we'd get to see all the beautiful lights and get to see Santa Claus at Wurzburgs. But then we'd head over to Herpelsheimer's to see Rudolph. So when Allison was born, I was 17 and I had my own car. So as she was growing up, I took her with me to, to show her some of the things that I loved about downtown. Yeah, and Rudolph was certainly a highlight because it was, it was magical because he could talk to you. Um, and then, of course, the best part was when the present came shooting out. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, being excited about what might be in that package. So I really love that Rudolph has been recreated in the storefront window downtown, and it really brings back a lot of special memories. Well, it does. Special time. Is, especially because it's recreated right from the photograph mm -hmm. that I took so many years ago. And so it's really special memories for us. My name is Annette Matthews Rand and I am Rudolph. Uh, one day I came in and the lady said, would you do Rudolph for me? I said, Rudolph, you mean be the animal? She said, yeah. So I went down and I looked around and said, I can do this. 
I went in, and there was a little box. It looked like a Christmas box. I went in, and there was a big chair. She said, you sit here, and you put these, all you do is put the gifts in when they put the money in. I said, okay. There, there's my switch that I can move it, turn the nose off and on, and the switch that, that moved the leg up and down. So I was switching and turning the lights on and doing everything. I felt like, ah, don't pay any attention to the person behind the count, behind the curtain. So I, the first night I went in, and it was really boring because nobody came. So I was throwing gifts up in the air and having fun, throwing them at Santa, and Santa was throwing them back at me. We were having big fun. Then Saturday came, and that was a tremendous time. I was really worn out by the time. I had 400 people probably come by, little kids pulling my nose, Rudolph, and I, we had a microphone, and it was good. Hi, little Susie. Little Susie's come, hi. Honk, honk on the nose, and I'm going, don't touch my nose, and freak the kid out. And the mother goes, look, talk to Rudolph. And they put the money in, and I'd shoot a gift out, and it was either a boy or a girl. So one time I gave a little boy a girl's gift, and he said, you gave me a girl's gift. So I had to give him another gift. The Santa and, and Rudolph were located in the basement of Herbal Shimer's in the corner, and there was a concession stand underneath the, the train. So they, the kids would go to the concession stand, get candy and stuff, and then go to the train and get dizzy and come down to Rudolph and get scared. So that was the fun part about it. And then my friend, Fred Bivens, he came by, and we had worked together at Central High School in a couple of high school plays. And I said, hi, Fred. And he goes, who's that? I says, Rudolph. Rudolph knows everything. Stay tuned for more memories, photos, and footage never before seen on TV. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group. Serving the area of Greater Grand Rapids for over 30 years. Oh wait, this isn't everything. Be right back. Special thanks to Canary Consulting, helping nonprofits fund their futures. Welcome back to Holiday Memories of Grand Rapids with your hosts, Teresa and Patrick. A lot of our memories are of the downtown Grand Rapids area, but there were other areas that people remember celebrating Christmas. In fact, we have somebody that has a unique story about her job during the holidays. I was working at Eastbrook Mall at one of the shoe stores and the manager mentioned that they needed someone to, you know, work in this Christmas tree and I of course needed extra money being a teenager so I applied for it and I think they were just happy to have somebody that was willing to sit inside a wooden box for four hours every night so I got the job. I think the most interesting thing was being able to startle people. I would be inside of this tree shaped thing and no one could see inside of it so a lot of people just thought it was a decoration so they would walk by and I would you know say something into the microphone that I had like Merry Christmas and they'd stop and they'd look around and go you know and then they'd pretend like they hadn't heard anything and they would just keep walking and I'd say aren't you gonna talk to me and then they would stop again and look around and then Pretty soon they would just keep walking and pretend they didn't hear anything at all. Like, I'm not hearing this, I'm just going to keep going. It was kind of like the Canon Camera Show, where, you know, people didn't know what to expect or where things were coming from. Uh, the children were fascinating. A lot of them were afraid of Tilly. They didn't, they just looked at her like, what is this big huge thing that's talking to me? Um, and then some of the older kids always, they wanted to, you know, they kept look, trying to look in the windows and, you know, see if there was somebody in there or that type of thing. But it was just a lot of fun. I know people thought she had a mustache, but it was really just her lips. But she wasn't very in a, in a very attractive Christmas tree, actually. <laughs> Coming up, more wonderful holiday memories. But first, a word from our sponsors.
Why do you partner with Grand Rapids Community Foundation? Because they make a bigger impact. To learn about local giving. Because of their commitment to our community. Since 1922, the Community Foundation has been a guide for local philanthropy. We partner because of their local expertise. Their trustworthiness. And integrity. Because they advocate for inclusion and equity. I'm Diana Seeger and I invite you to go online and join us today. Grand Rapids Community Foundation, connecting with community. Thank you to Regan Marketing, where the plus is only the beginning. And we're back with holiday memories of Grand Rapids. Right now, let's take a look at more nostalgic recollections from community members. Well, it was always a warm and friendly time for us. And I love shopping downtown for Christmas, and I love the parades that we would have. And, um, and we all went to, yeah. we went to parades all the time, mm -hmm. every, every Christmas. When we were young, it was uh, Dad, uh, Grandpa Bob. Uh, Dad would take us down to the Santa Claus parade uh, around Thanksgiving every year. And then we would park down there on, or we'd park ourselves down there on Monroe so we could get the view from the corner as the, as the parade would pass by. And it seemed like it was always cold. Um, it was one of those always occurring on days when it would be the, the light snow and my sister Ann and I would be very bundled up, and so much so she could barely see the parade, and she'd stand about three feet tall with her, with her hood wrapped around her, her face. And Dad would get so excited, um, not waiting for Santa Claus and the floats and stuff, but as he could hear the, the bands, the high school bands coming down the street, um, he would stop everybody around us, including us, and say, and ask us to guess, what is the next band? What do you think the next band is gonna be? And then he would see the colors and he'd say, well, I think that's Ottawa Hills. Or then it would be, okay, it's blue, this is, this is Catholic Central. And he would just recite the bands as they came along, talk about and, and, and evaluate who did the best music. And then he would talk about his time as a kid coming down to the parade, you know, 25 years earlier when he was young and coming down in the 30s and 40s and watching some of those same high school bands. Um, it was a, an amazing memory of Grand Rapids, and we talk about it, my sisters and I talk about it all the time. One of the great highlights of growing up in Grand Rapids.
The Tom and Ginny Thomasma kids are grateful for the wonderful Grand Rapids holiday memories and love. Additional support provided by Jane Bolin Wellness and the Grand Rapids Singing Telegram. Big things have arrived at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. For a limited time, experience the fascinating world of dinosaurs in Expedition Dinosaur and play for hours in toys. Control animatronic dinosaurs and become a paleontologist. Dive into a world of toys and games spanning generations, including a 1980s coin-operated arcade, Expedition Dinosaur, and toys. Now open at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Learn more at grpm.org. Be curious. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group. Serving the area of Greater Grand Rapids for over 30 years. For generations, people have come from far and wide to enjoy the windows and decorations that festoon downtown Grand Rapids. We're in Monument Park, enjoying the vintage decorations that you inspired. I remember as a kid in Grand Rapids at Christmas time downtown going to Wurzburgs and uh, standing in front of the the windows the where the mechanical figures were always displayed and they were just magical. And I remember in the background there would be these fellows uh, banging with sticks on a bench and they were trying to get donations for their charity. And so I, that's, that's the audio memory I have with the windows. And if I'm not mistaken, this was right by the bargain basement doors, which is where we usually entered. In downtown Grand Rapids was the retail center of the region at that point. We had three major department stores, Steckety's, which was Dutch, Wurzburg's, which was German, and Herbelsheimer's, which was German. And there was competition between the Herbelsheimer's and the Wurzburg's, my pride says we always won, to outdo each other at Christmas time. So the decorations in the building were absolutely staggering. but they had the windows decorated really nice, and it was really good. Of course, Herbst and, uh, and Wurzburgs at that time were competition to each other, you know, and they all tried to each outdo each other, you know, in their window displays. And uh, it was always a constant battle for them. Uh, people did the work, you know, in the windows to, you know, try to outdo the other store. It was beautiful. And it's probably my young memories, but I remember the windows in Herpelsheimer's and Wurzburg's and the animation and the Santas and um, coming down for the Santa Claus parade every year, uh, standing in the cold, bundled up, but um, all lined up on Monroe Avenue looking at all of the fabulous floats and all the bands and of course Santa Claus when he came down the road. about the time I got my first car, a Chevy Corvair, by the way. <laughs> and uh, um, if it was snowing out, it was already a challenge to be a new driver, getting used to winter driving. But if you came up Fulton or Monroe, which went right through, and had to make the little turn onto Fulton, there sat that candle. Uh, gripping the steering wheel. That was my position, <laughs> hoping nothing is going to skid or uh, bump me into some other car while, or into the candle, which was the biggest thing. Let's not be the person who drives into the candle. It was a little scary. The following story was shared during the live filming of Holiday Memories of Grand Rapids in 2014. 
we offer it to you now for your enjoyment. You guys want to hear a story? Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story about what Grand Rapids was like when I was your age at Christmas time. It was the holiday season, so downtown we would go to see lights, look in windows, to shop in the snow. I would gather my family to ride on the bus. It was always a special occasion for us. And I, with my green stamps, and Pa with the list, dreaming of sales so hard to resist, when what to my wandering eyes would appear? A window display of sweet seasonal cheer. The lights, how they glittered, the energy, merry, with animated animals. Too long did we tarry. We had to get gifts. There were stockings to stuff. And you just never knew when enough was enough. <laughs> to Herpelsheimers and Foxes and Wurzburgs and Stex, to Woolworths and Kreskys, to Grants and to Pex. Our next task at hand was to head down Monroe to the grand old store with its basement below, to find the reindeer with a red nose so bright, his magic was charming, it brought us delight. Down his chute flew a toy for each little guest, each child would think that theirs was the best. Then on to the train that hung high above, to ride was a thrill that we all did love. Then a burger from Butter Wagon tasting so yummy, found a nice home in the pit of our tummies. With presents all bought and the moon overhead, we'd left our downtown to climb into bed. As I nodded to sleep, I thought of my city. At this time of year, it was always so pretty. I was proud that there was such community spirit, and I'd tell anyone who was willing to hear it. So I say, one and all, our town's out of sight. And happy Christmas to all, and to all, a good night. Did you know artist and designer Harry Westland worked in the display department of Wurzburgs and Herpelsheimers before starting his own company? Westland designed displays and graphics for a number of local and regional companies. He is credited with being the father of Wood Radio and Television mascot, Willie Wood. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group. Serving the area of Greater Grand Rapids for over 30 years. Special thanks to Canary Consulting, helping nonprofits fund their futures. Before we close out our show, we have a few more gems to share with you. Our first story comes from Grand Rapidian Chris Arnold, who really speaks to the true spirit of community. And no holiday special that celebrates downtown Grand Rapids back in the day would be complete without a few Santa stories. My mom comes from a family of seven, and then I was raised by my mom. Um, with also seven in my family and um, raised um, by my mom as a single parent. Santa Claus girls were a big part of, of my family because, again, growing up in a large family with one parent, we um, always looked forward to getting that Santa Claus, I, I believe it was a brown, a big brown bag when they delivered the gifts. and. Um, in those packages were always the um, hand-knitted gloves and the hats and then, um, of course, that uh, little bag of the traditional hard um, Christmas candy that you, you don't, I don't see that much anymore, but we always looked forward to that so that we, we were always thankful for the Santa Claus girls and, you know, what that brought to our lives. The Santa Claus girls have been around for 107 years in the Kent County area. Technically, the Santa Claus Girls are the Santa Claus Girls of Kent County. Uh, they provide gifts to needy children 
uh, about 15,000 uh, last year and we may grow to 17,000 this year. Uh, each gift is individually wrapped. It is gender specific and it is uh, age specific. We go from ages of zero up to age 13 and we, um, we service about oh, a little over 5,000 families every year. The organization is 100% volunteer. These are former gals that were working here, and these two are myself and my sister Jan. Uh, 18 years ago, we were approached by some of the younger gals of the group, uh, the older gals of the group, and asked us if we would be interested in coming to work here for a while. So I came in and I tried it one day, and I then I got my sister Joan to come in and do it with us. And I said, what do you think? Could we put in a day or two a week here? And now we have the three of us. It all started 18 years ago. S. Abraham donated all the candy, said we could have enough for 17,000 kids. That's a very nice donation to Santa Claus Girls. <laughs> Every penny goes into the bag, we call it. There's more than one gift per child, and so each one is specific to that child, and they receive in their package for each child a book, a piece of clothing, usually uh, a sweatshirt or pajamas, uh, some toys, some candy. All of the proceeds for the Santa Claus Girls to achieve this effort are donated from the general public. The, um, the packages are delivered to the home, fully wrapped, in bags for the family uh, and that's done by volunteers almost 400 volunteers show up on delivery day which is always a saturday it's a great group of men and women predominantly women hence the name the santa claus girls and the santa claus girls like to say that um, they are simply the conduit to make those things happen for a happy christmas morning i think now when i think about it it was just um the the value of um, knowing that somebody cared. Thing that, that I remember about Herpelsheimer's is there were little hoof marks. Those were meant to be the deer tracks that would lead their way up to Santa Claus. So that's another thing that I remember about Herpelsheimer's were the hoof marks and looking for those, those um, deer tracks to find Santa. <laughs> Here's a photo. <laughs> family it, it is um, we are a very close family and large close family so I think just that um, tradition of being together and, and um, just being thankful and I think with my daughter just um, her growing up a little bit differently certainly a little um, more um, privileged than I I was growing up um, just teaching her the value of giving and um, you know, supporting others, and, and it really is not all about the material things. It's about what can we do to um, support each other and, and to um, help others. In addition to the wonderful photographs shared by the community, 
Let's enjoy this heartwarming moment. Additional support provided by Jane Bolin Wellness and the Grand Rapids Singing Telegram. Big things have arrived at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. For a limited time, experience the fascinating world of dinosaurs in Expedition Dinosaur and play for hours in toys. Control animatronic dinosaurs and become a paleontologist. Dive into a world of toys and games spanning generations, including a 1980s coin-operated arcade. Expedition Dinosaur and toys. Now open at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Learn more at grpm.org. Be curious. Special thanks to One Trick Pony and The Cottage Bar and Restaurant, a Grand Rapids tradition since 1927. Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group. The Newman Mox family wishes you all a Merry Christmas. Welcome back to Holiday Memories of Grand Rapids with your hosts, Teresa and Patrick. We can't begin to put into words what a wonderful time we've had here and how much we appreciate all those that have so generously shared their photos, their memories, their pasts. And in this holiday season, we wish for you joy as you remember your past. We wish you countless opportunities to make new memories. We wish you health and happiness for you and your loved ones. And as we close, we'd like to recognize how fortunate we are to share these memories. There are many that aren't as fortunate, so please take this holiday season to give. Give a smile, a hug, your time, your treasure, however you can. Thank you for joining us. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.
Holiday Memories is brought to you by Newman Tax Group, serving the area of Greater Grand Rapids for over 30 years. Thank you to Inspire Talent Group, scouting actors, singers, models, and dancers. Find them on Facebook at Inspire Talent Group, LLC. Thank you to Regan Marketing, where the plus is only the beginning. Oh wait, this isn't everything. Be right back. Oh! <laughs>